tutorial we're going to be using Adobe Illustrator to create a lace pattern that can be applied to uh, various different uh, pre-drawn uh, drawings in Illustrator and um, for this example I'm using this as a costume design example uh, based on Queen Elizabeth II uh, costume design but this can also be applied to uh, your uh, any type of fashion drawing as well. So I've got a couple of examples up here for you, you can have a look. So this is the uh, drawing that I've used as um, as a base, uh, the basis, and you can see I've actually applied a repeat pattern uh, lace design inside of the uh, the shapes. So that's kind of before and after. Uh, I'll be using uh, MacBook Pro, and I'm working with uh, Illustrator version 24.1 for this tutorial. So the first thing I'll do is I'll just show you some examples of the types of repeat patterns that you can create uh, using this technique but also I'll be following up with some other videos for you as well. So we've got an example of repeat pattern here with a lace swatch that I've um, found online. We've also got a, 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 a mirrored repeat pattern here and I've also got a lace trim which I have applied various different colours over the top of and we're also going to be utilising Photoshop for this tutorial as well. So let's go ahead and I'm using Google Chrome um, for my, my web browser. I'm just going to search for um, a website called pixabay.com and this is a website whereby you can uh, you can search for and use various different uh, imagery for your design projects and it's copyright free for um, commercial use. Uh, you've also got this example here, the creativecommons.org website that you can search for images. You'll have to check the licenses for those. Um, and if you Google search for an image to use, just make sure that you're um, checking the licenses from the website. Uh, where you found the actual uh, lace pattern, especially if you're using the images online. Uh, but a lot of the people that watch this video are students, so if it's kind of internal projects, then that should be fine. So I've just typed in lace into pixabay.com. I'm going to scroll down and find a decent image to work with. Here we go, this one I think would work well. I'm going to click on that, and then I'm going to select free download and it gives you a list of different sizes that you can use so I'm going to go for the largest file size that should be the highest quality image to use and um, also bear in mind that I've selected this image because it's a flat repeating pattern that's important for this technique if I google search for uh, using the term lace you can see it comes up with quite a few different types of lace images um, so this one would be useful, that one would probably be useful, um, but the images that have got the edge of the fabric in it, um, we won't be working with those in this video, that will be the next video. So I'm going to download my image, and you can sign up um, to this website as well. I haven't signed up just yet, I'm not logged in, but we can look at that later. Choose where you want to save it. going to replace the original and then I'm going to go to Adobe Photoshop so this is the updated version for uh, 2020 I'm going to go file open and I'm going to select my lace image I'm going to click open and I'm just going to minimize this window here so you can see what I'm doing uh, I'm going to unlock the background layers so this is in the layers panel click the lock symbol I'm going to make sure that this background layer is highlighted. So just click on it in the layers panel to highlight it in a light grey. We can then go to image adjustments and threshold to turn that to black and white. And you can adjust the slider here to adjust the amount, the amount of black and white that's in the image. Click OK. If you want to invert the black and white, I'm just going to zoom in a bit, you can go to image adjustments and invert as you can see 
Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is remove all of the white area so that that is uh, transparent. So you need to make sure that your background layer is unlocked, which we've already done. Then I am going to click and hold on the eraser tool and go down to the magic eraser. And if I make sure that this box is unticked, click in the white area and then you should see the transparent pattern appear, which in, yeah, indicates transparency. I'm going to zoom out again and I'm going to go to the crop tool. Now this is where you need to be um, kind of quite clever with where you're cropping. So you need to make sure that the edges of the design are repeatable as much as possible. So any imagery that goes, that touches the edge of the canvas at the top must continue uh, with the edge of the canvas at the bottom. And the same with the left and right. So I am going to move the crop box up to the middle of this circle here, this circle motif. If I scroll up, I'm going to do the same thing at the, the top here. So let's crop it down to the middle of those circle circles and then I'm going to go to the left hand side and do the same thing so I'm going to the middle of this circle here on the right hand side let's do the same thing too once I've done that zoom out a bit click the tick go to file save as and we're going to change it, the format to uh, PNG because that supports transparency. Hit save. And I already created one, so I can just replace that. Uh, I'll leave it as large file size and click OK. Then go back to Illustrator. And I'm going to place the, uh, the raster image uh, into my, my vector file. So I'm going to go File and Place. Find that PNG. And for this, because we're going, to, um, we're going to use this as a repeat pattern, we need to make sure that this image is embedded rather than linked. So, so you can untick that link box at the bottom. And sometimes you can't see it, so you can click Options um, on a Mac as well. Hit Place, and click and drag to place that image in. We're then going to go to our Swatches panel over here. If you can't see it, you can go to Window, and then uh, Swatches, make sure that's ticked. Go to your Move tool, or Selection tool, the black arrow top left and then click and drag on that image and drag it into your swatches panel and that will make it into a, a pattern fill and we're just going to go over to our garment drawing uh, if you're working with a group of objects as I am here you can just click in a space to deselect anything then go to your direct selection tool click on the shape that you want to add the pattern to and we just we actually want to create a duplicate of this shape so it sits over the top so if we go to edit copy and then edit paste in front it will paste it directly on top we then want to make sure that our fill box is in front of the stroke box just by clicking on it uh, on, on the left hand side Go back to your swatches and then click on your pattern fill lace swatch and it should add it as a fill colour over the top of that, um, that pattern. As you can see it's worked quite well but there's a couple of other settings we can use to make it look um, more transparent and integrated with the illustration. So we go to the transparency panel over here or remember you can use window and then transparency. We are going to change the blending mode here to multiply. And we can also reduce the opacity if it's looking a little bit harsh. And you can see I've reduced the opacity now. We now want to reduce the scale of the pattern so that it looks in keeping with the, the drawing. So to do that, we're going to go to Object, Transform, and scale. 
And when this box comes up, you want to make sure that transform objects is unticked and transform patterns is ticked. Leave preview unticked for a second. It should show up at the full size to start with. And you can just reduce um, the, you, the value here in the uniform box. And then just double click preview. And it should reduce the pattern. Now, if that doesn't work, as you can see, sometimes it doesn't always reduce the pattern. We can actually use the, uh, the scale tool. So to access that, we're just going to open up the edit toolbar and go to this option up here and make sure that's set to advanced. Let's just open that back up. And our scale tool is here, so we're going to click on that, zoom out a little bit, and then we're going to start from kind of the, the top right corner outside of the drawing. You're going to left click and drag inwards, and as you do that, you want to hold down the shift key and the tilde key. So the shift key will keep the proportions of the, the pattern so that it's, that it's not stretched, and the tilde key will make sure that the, the pattern is um, scaled rather than uh, the actual object that it's sitting inside of and when you let go you're going to let go of your mouse button and then you're going to let go of the keys so we'll give that another go you can see sometimes it's a bit temperamental it did work that third time so I'm just going to undo that, try once more, so I'm going to my scale tool, I'm going to click and drag towards my shape, then hold down shift and tilde, then let go of your mouse button and then the keys and you can see it's now scaled the pattern. Now if you're not sure what the tilde key looks like or where it is on your keyboard, I'm just going to open that back up. We'll just do, do a Google search so you can see. So I'm just going to put in tilde key so you can see what that looks like. So it's in various places on different keyboards. Mine's in the bottom left and I'm on a MacBook Pro, but you can see it's top left on some of the Windows keyboards and some of the older Mac keyboards as well. Um, okay, so if I want to add in um, the pattern to the other shapes, I can just do that. So if I go to my direct, direct selection tool, click on a shape, I'm going to go use the keyboard shortcut, it's command C to copy, and then command F to paste in front. And then if you go to the eyedropper tool, you can simply just click on your pattern to copy over uh, the pattern from one shape to another very quickly. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, look in at, for my next video, it's in the same playlist, I'm going to do another couple of videos where we're going to be looking at lace trims um, and how to add in colour to your lace patterns.